In this tutorial, we're going to look at the inversion of 3D resistivity data. We're going to follow similar principles to what we've covered already, but in the 3D case, we need to work with the 3D mesh, and there's a subtle difference in the way we label electrodes. The data set we're going to work with is a subset of a, of a larger data set from a study in southwest China where we collected a, a, a series of parallel lines at a small scale on some hill slope plots to look at soil variation around a site. The surveys were done with parallel lines one meter apart and the electrode spacing was 0.3 meters 48 electrodes on each line. We're going to work with a subset of four parallel lines to illustrate the general principle. So we select 3D inverse and we're going to read in a 3D survey from regular 2D lines. So we select this tab and the line spacing is one meter so we can leave this setting to its default value of one. Then we select the 2D lines. We've got four lines, four files, so we read these in and we'll see then a pseudo section of the 3D data as four 2D pseudo sections. Now I can read in the electrode spacing. So I've got that in a CSV file. So I read this in here and you see I've got X, Y, Z coordinates, an indication of whether they're on the surface or whether they're buried and a label. And the label is different this time because it's got two numbers for each electrode label. And so I've got the first identifier is the line or it could be a borehole for a cross borehole data set and the second identifier is the number along that line so the first 48 labels go 1 1 to 148 and then the next line is 2 1 to 248 and so on and this continues until the last line last electrode is 448 I can go to pre-processing I can look at my reciprocal errors because in this data set I've got reciprocal measurements and I can look at the resistance error model. So these are my observed transfer resistance errors versus transfer resistance and as before I can fit a model through there and use the parameters of this model for weighting the data in the inversion. I could ignore this and use a simple error model. So in inversion setting, the values of A weight and B weight are set to zero because it knows it's going to use that error model. If, however, I decided to override this, I could do that by specifying a value of A weight and B weight. For example, a B weight of 0.02 for 2% errors. But in this case, I'm going to use the individual errors that come out from that error model. I need to specify a mesh, design a mesh. So I can do that by selecting here tetrahedral mesh. And there are two factors on here. And these can make a, have a big impact on, on the time taken to, to run the inversion. If I select this tetrahedral mesh with the default setting, then in this case I've got 70,000 elements roughly in my mesh and I can look at this, I can rotate this around with my mouse uh, I can zoom in on this and look at my mesh and you'll see that the spacing of the mesh of the elements is is fine near the surface and then it increases as we move away from our electrodes this is dictated by this growth factor at the top and growth factor at the bottom. I can adjust these to make the mesh coarser or make the mesh finer. 
I'm going to leave this like this and then go to inversion settings which I don't need to change but just to, to, to remind you again of these A weight and B weight values which mean the um, error model is going to be used for weighting data and then I run to inversion and I click invert and now R3T is activated to invert the 3D data. This is going to run much slower than R2 particularly given the size of the mesh and the number of data that we're using in the inversion. So as before the inversion progresses so the final inversion after three iterations and convergence to a misfit of one is shown as log resistivity. I can change my color scale here and I can display as resistivity or conductivity and I can also display my sensitivity map showing areas of high sensitivity in red in this case and low sensitivity in blue. I can zoom in with my mouse and I can rotate this round to view and I can select parts of the uh, mesh to, to view. Uh, first of all if I just show my grid here so I've got Z in the vertical X and the long axis here, Y in the short axis. So let's say we decide to plot the uh, section at X is 1.5 or we plot Z at minus 2. I can explore some of the image with some of the basic tools that are available here. I can also save the data and that will save all the output from the inversion including VTK files and the VTK files can then be read into Paraview or other software that allows more enhanced uh, manipulation and visualization of the uh, results.